Okay, and we're live. Uh, welcome everyone to PTTV episode 15. Uh, we have what Chris called the matinee show for you today a little earlier. And we're going to mix things up today. Today, uh, Chris Johnson is going to be moderating, and we're going to be talking injury management. So without further ado, I'm going to pass it off to him. Um, if you have questions for everyone to answer, you can leave a comment on the episode page or tweet with PTTV15, uh, or leave a comment on our Facebook page, and I will be fielding those, and hopefully we'll have time to answer your questions live here on air today. All right. Thanks for, uh, for again, Therapedia hosting this. And uh, I just want to start by saying that, you know, our thoughts and prayers are with everyone uh, back in Boston to all those folks who were affected. That was obviously a tragic incident. And, you know, we're here talking about running. So I just uh, I want to acknowledge all of those folks. Um, hopefully something like that doesn't happen again in the future. Um, I also want to say I'm very flattered to be here with Bruce Wilk and Jay. Um, I mean, I... I don't know how I ended up in this position, but um, this should be really fun. Um, both Bruce and Jay have an incredible um, resume in terms of their experience working with runners. Jay obviously um, spends a lot of time um, in the lab as well as the clinic, and Bruce has done a ton of work um, with runners of all ages and abilities. So um, I want to just let you I'll let you uh, introduce yourself, Bruce, and, uh, and then Jay, and then we'll get into some of the questions. Okay, thank you. My name is Bruce Welk, and two of my favorite things to talk about is running and physical therapy. It's what a nice way to spend an hour of the afternoon. I've been a runner for 42 years, and let me tell you, there's been a great deal of confusion about running injury management for all that time. Uh, I've been a physical therapist with a running subspecialty for 32 years. I'm a running coach and I'm, I'm an owner of a running specialty shop. And I deal with runners at many levels of many types all day long. And they're always asking me questions about injury management and there's so much confusion. So I wrote a book called The Runner Recovery Program and I wrote and I have a workbook that goes along with it. It's a step-by-step -step pro protocol for injured runners to self-manage and negotiate the medical system. The books help runners customize the recovery program based on running history, pre-existing condition, severity and type of injury, affected regions, and individual goals. There's a, when I work with runners, there's a great deal of difference between running injury management, running injury prevention, and improved running performance. To try to do all three things at once is confusing. Confusing for the runner and confusing for me as a coach of the PT. Everybody, I mean even this morning, starts with me. Bruce, I want you to get rid of the injury. I want you to make it so I never have an injury again and I want to PR that marathon. And I'm like, I won't even talk to you about the race until we meet the steps to get over the injury. Then we have to train to build back your base. We need an adequate base to draw upon to do some race specific training and that's the prevention and running injury performance is not about holding the runner back. It's about beating the competition and it's three different things. Good. Thanks Jay, go ahead. Hey, uh, my name is Jay Desherry. Uh I'm a physical therapist and uh, I'm very happy to be here today with you guys. So uh, thanks for the opportunity, and I hope it'll be a, a good, uh, good session. So uh, I, I guess I have kind of a weird background. I, uh, I was trained as, uh, as most of the audience is as a clinician, and uh, you know, clinicians are are taught uh, to group things as signs and symptoms, and we cluster uh, uh, you know factors we assess uh, through our subjective and objective exam to figure out you know what is wrong with the individual. Um, and the interesting point is, uh, is that we don't have 100% definite uh, diagnostic criteria for any type of diagnosis. Um, you know, and that's basically how clinical medicine is. We try to look at clustering signs and symptoms. Um, and uh, an interesting thing is, uh, I was in the gate lab for, uh, or have been in the gate lab for uh, the past seven or eight years. Uh, and eventually ran that lab at University of Virginia. And the interesting factor is when you look at engineers, they don't like clinical point of view. Um, they don't like clustering signs and symptoms. They like to look at ones and zeros and find out what things are definitely inclusive or exclusive. Um, and unfortunately, 
people aren't that simple. So uh, I guess my uh, my career path has taken me into to some interesting uh, uh, aspects because um, I, I've I've learned um, you know from the assessment of the clinical aspect um, and I've looked at the idea behind the biomechanical aspect and so what I guess I've done and and tried to do over the lines of the years is, is sort of blur those lines um, and you know whenever you read a research study. It's important to figure out what that study is saying. Um, research guides what we do uh, and has a very powerful role, role in our careers. Um, but realize that a research study shows you an average result in a group of individuals. It doesn't show you what each individual, uh, how, how, you know, what, what their unique aspects are. Um, and so it's important to realize uh, the difference between an average finding uh, and what an N of 1 is. Uh, I think it's an interesting thing I've been able to do is try and pick out what individual factors impact um, uh, you know the, the overall performance. Uh, as Bruce pointed out, there's a number of uh, factors we have to kind of you know take into our equation. Um, I would just say that you know I don't ever start an eval uh, without asking one simple question: um, What are your goals as as an athlete, as a runner, uh, and making sure that every single thing we're doing is is working up to basically bolster uh, their goals because that's what we're here for. Fantastic. And just to uh, you know highlight a couple things again. Both Bruce and Jay have recently come out with books. So Bruce has a running injury recovery program, and Jay has uh, anatomy for runners. And they're both great resources. Most clinicians who have any, have any interest in working with runners should both ha have both of these books on their shelf. And a couple articles that I also want to just highlight that they both uh, contributed to in terms of the medical literature. Um, kinematics and kinetics of gait from lab to the clinic. Jay did this. It's in Clinics and Sports Medicine. That's 2010. Um, as well as a recent article, and we'll uh, get into some of the triathlon related running pertaining to sagittal plane kinematics during the transition from run into triathletes. And that's in the Journal of Science in Medicine and Sport 2013. Another article that Bruce put out that um, is really important to read is defective running shoes is a contributing factor in plantar fasciitis and that was in JOSPT 2000 so for those that are watching who have an interest in uh, in working with runners I think these are all very important uh, pieces of literature to read so sorry to digress a little bit um, so the first question that we have a list of questions we're going to go through the first one is what is natural running um, there are a lot of big hitters um, on the Natural Running website, and a lot of them have a, a background in terms of research and are doing great work. So that's a question a lot of runners pose to me, whether they're triathletes, you know, they're competitive runners, or runners presenting to my facility with injuries. So the first question we're going to talk about is what is natural running? Um, and we'll let you start with this. Um, do you want to start with this one, Jay? Uh, sure. Um, okay. <laughs> So it's funny. I always get this question: uh, What is natural running? I, I don't really like the misnomer "natural natural running." <laughs> uh, I just like to look at running. Um, I think if you look at what the you know what the, what the media likes to identify as natural running, it's uh, you know it's this idea that people tend to uh, or, or have run in a very altered gait pattern for a long time, and uh, and we're looking at natural running getting back to basics, getting back to how we you know. Uh, supposedly should move. Um, I, I would just uh, I, I would say this: um, when we talk about running, uh, running should be actually quite simple. Uh, I, I believe if, if you tr if you run well, uh, you're running as efficiently as possible, and that means you're you're putting as little amount of energy as you can for a given pace, um, and you're running in w with a style that puts as, as little uh, wear and tear in the body as possible, and that wear and tear is based based on a number of factors with, um, you know, with the body brings the equation as far as um, from a stability aspect, uh, and it brings into uh, your form. Um, but we never really talk about form unless we talk about the individual, uh, because our individual is going to steer our form. Um, so there, there's a lot, a lot more to it than just, you know, contacting on your midfoot or contacting forefoot or rear foot or contacting barefoot or without shoes or some other random type of shoe. Um, I, I, I view running as, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a good way to run and, and that's what we're trying to figure out and, and help educate folks on today. Great. Bruce? Okay, here's my answer. What is natural running? Nobody knows. There's no agreed upon definition of natural running. Natural running 
has become like the word natural ingredients in food and cosmetics. Uh, legally, when it comes to that, there is no definition. And here's a big problem. Natural running advocates claim if you run in a special way with special shoes, you'll eliminate injuries. The pose method, uh, I was this, uh, this was a running coach. Uh, I knew him from 1993 to 2003, and he wrote a book, Pose Method, which is a fine book. But from the very beginning, he claimed to eliminate running injuries. He worked and practiced just, just a mile or two from me. I saw a lot of runners, and I'm telling you, he did not eliminate running injuries. A few years later, uh, Chi Running came out, and he, this coach and, and author, and wrote, wrote a good book, claimed if you followed his approach, you'd have injury-free running. And I've had many injured runners go to his clinics, and they've come back to me, and he did not eliminate uh, running injuries. Um, we have next slide. Oh, we're not slide. Okay. Next slide. So, um, uh, two years ago, the, uh, a coach and author and co-founder of Newton Shoes wrote a book called Natural Running. And, and again, the advocates didn't ag agree with his definition. And um, they, you know, and he developed some shoes. Can we go back to me? Sorry for the little transitions. Are we, I mean, we're back. Can you guys see me? Okay, so this is a this is a, this is a Newton shoe, and I bought the shoe to wear test when it was first introduced. And when it first came out, Newton shoes said it was designed to for a injury, an injury preventative stride, and it was designed for the pros method to run on your forefoot. Several years later, when the Chi method came out, Newton shoes and they didn't change the shoe design much at all, was the Chi Method shoe designed for midfoot striking. Then it was the Minimus shoe, which is a flat and unsupportive shoe, and then it became the natural running shoe. Um, th this shoe didn't change much, uh, the design didn't change much, but the marketing changed. Now here's a problem, the injury rate soars when runners randomly start to use flat, unsupportive shoes. The advocates then claim for the injured runners, they were either not following the program right, not listening to their bodies, or transitioning too suddenly. Running injuries occur to the best runners with the best coaches with perfect footwear. Runners need to have a plan in place for injury management before they need it. A plan in place will reduce confusion, lead to less fear and anxiety, and is the, and will help with the will help get over their injury sooner. Give them something to focus on. You know, a plan to get over the injury. So with with the different uh, with the different schools of thought, you know, you put out the the pose method, natural running. Do you think there there is any merits in, into some of those approaches? I mean, do you think there are bits and pieces that you agree with, Bruce? Oh well. Yes, for all of them. They are, all styles of running have a place. But to claim there's a magic way to run that you don't get hurt mm -hmm. would, be, would be going against you, mm -hmm. which, which in my mind would go against the natural tendency for humans. Humans are naturally frail. Natural, humans naturally make mistakes. Na humans naturally don't see what's coming. And the most natural runners get the best training and the best coaching. It takes a great deal of work to make running look easy and natural. Do you have any input on that, Jay? Um, yeah. I'd, uh, first of all, I'd, I'd ask us to sort of think, um, I guess, a little bit bigger picture. Um, before we get jumping into shoes, I mean, foot, footwear is a tool. Um, that's it. Shoes don't run. Um, runners run. So uh, let's, let's not let's step away from the shoes for a second. Um, I'd like to get back to that for sure, but uh, when we talk about uh, form tenants for a second, um, we've done some studies on this in our lab and actually had folks, uh, you know, we, we actually um, uh, 
many years ago at our UVA uh, Running Medicine Conference, we actually had uh, some pose instructors and chi instructors come in and, uh, and teach some individuals uh, th those techniques. And we had them uh, practice technique for, for a given period of time uh, and get, you know, get subjective feedback from the individuals. Uh, get objective data uh, from the labs and uh, from, from our lab and, uh, and look at what we saw and it's kind of interesting. So first of all, I'd say that you know whenever somebody talks about you know, a given technique, you have to look at is the runner actually adopting what 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 she says is chi and what pose says is pose and what evolution says is evolution and whatever branded technique you want to look at. So um, people always interpret things a little bit differently. Um, I think we've all seen folks come in and they, you know say, yeah, I, I transitioned to run on my forefoot. And they, they may well be contacting their forefoot, but they're doing 25 other things wrong as well. Um, so uh, it, it's not just about you know one thing. So uh, long story short, um, there are a number of, of things which we which sound very nice uh, about coined running forms. Um, you know, a lot of those forms, Chi and Pose specifically, uh, highlight the fact that if you run, you know, in their way, uh, that, that you know you're 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 not pushing off, right? They say you're not pushing off; you're just using gravity to fall forward. Um, One hundred percent of every single athlete I've ever seen at any pace, in any running style at all, always, 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 forever. <laughs> Forever uh, has what's called a, a positive uh, inter uh, a positive posterior ground reaction force, which means they are pushing off. Um, and uh, so, I think you know that whole idea behind gravity pulling you forward that that's not true. Um, you push off. Um, and uh, so, I think you know that, that's that's a big problem I have with 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 uh, a lot of the styles. Um, are, are there things that are important? Sure, there are nice things that are important. Uh, I, I think that you know um, you know posture alignment's a huge one. Uh, I think about you know where your foot is in relation to your body is it, a good one as well. Um, you know, and I, I love all this stuff. I think you know.
Hi viewers, thank you so much for watching the episode thus far. We unfortunately had some technical difficulties and we had to end the webcast earlier than we intended to, so this is just going to be part one of running um, injury management, and we'll come back to you very soon with part two and finish up the discussion. Um, in the meantime, all of the materials referenced in this episode are in the comments on the page below, and you can also check out both Jay and Bruce's books, um, Anatomy for Runners and the Running Injury Recovery Program. Um, they're both available online at Amazon, and you can check those out and find out more um, about the different topics they were discussing with us today. And again, stay tuned for part two and more episodes of PTTV.